a time in our company uh, where a lot of you guys have heard at the conventions and stuff where I'm Marcus Live back in early 2016. I'd gotten started 2015 in December and launched in, in uh, January 2016. We started going up the ranks. We're absolutely crushing it. And there was a time where there was a major setback in our company. I'm not going to go through all the details, but let me tell you, one of the people that stayed the course through all of that was Mr. Christopher Derrick. Uh, we were down in Vegas together. We had breakfast together. Uh, we were pretty much up all night long. And uh, this is an individual that I was super grateful to plant my flag with. Uh, we'd actually done a couple little small home events together. And I thought, you know, this guy's special, man. This guy can speak. He can train. And it was actually that night, guys, that we came up with at the time it was called IML TV, which today is Go Live. It was in that meeting that Go Live was born, known as IML TV back then. We were going to say, hey, Netflix and chill. Now you can Forex and chill. And Christopher Derrick was a part of that process. Christopher Derrick was really, besides Chris Terry, our first educator. You know, we got the DFW Trade House guys with, you know, Mike Miles and them. But like Christopher Derrick was really the guy that kind of helped kick this whole thing off. And here's the thing. He did it for free. He was getting paid nothing. So I want you to listen to an individual here who has been a pioneer since the beginning and helped to pioneer what today is go live. He is not only one of our top educators in the entire company, but he's also a chairman in our company as well. And this guy is going to go chairman 500. He's going to talk to you about how to bounce back because he hit the top and he nearly went all the way to the bottom and then he got it all back again. And that my friends is a phenomenal story. He's going to talk about as well, becoming the leader within you. A lot of you guys have read that book, John C. Maxwell. I've read it many, many times. He's going to talk about how to become the leader within you. And so with that, guys, I want to go ahead and bring on one of the top educators in I Am Mastery Academy and a chairman inside of I Am Mastery Academy, Mr. Christopher Dare. Guys, go inside of the chat box right now. Put some fire emojis in the box for Christopher Derek, Chris, let me know if you can hear me out there, man. We are excited to have you on. Guys, we got 700 people on the Zoom, but we've got a lot of people on the I Am Elite Facebook as well. Chris, let me know if you can hear me. There you are, man. I can hear you. Loud and clear, man. We're excited to have you on, Chris. People are excited to hear from you, man. We're pumped. Perfect. Uh, oh, <laughs> thanks for uh, bringing us back down memory lane. You know, it's crazy uh, when people always ask all the time, you know, if we knew what was going to happen and I'm just going to be very transparent. Uh, I didn't for sure. I didn't know. And then once I started to research more, you know, it's in a place of uh, uncomfortability. It's a place where you don't know where, where faith needs to step in. Right. If you always know all the time, then you never really, you know, truly need faith, you know, and I really want to give it back to Brandon. I know I have 15 minutes, but um, you know, I've been watching Brandon since I was like, you know, 18, 19 years old, you know, I actually, I actually went to, to, you know, high school in Utah, you know, so I was in Syracuse area and I went to Westminster for a little bit uh, for a full semester until I realized that college was not really for me. You know, the return on investment for paying 16,000 a semester, I don't think was a good return on investment for exactly what I was actually going to school for. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm just going to jump into everything, but thank you, Brandon, for allowing me to be on here. Uh, and yeah, you know, uh, lately, you know, when it comes to trainings and stuff, you know, I started to understand that there's a lot of people, you know, that, you know, uh, you know, see all these different successful people and see all these different individuals as having all these different accolades and all these different achievements. But there's not that many people that's talking about the realism of what really takes place majority of the times, you know, there's very few people that actually make it to be super successful and get to a place that's just phenomenal. But the one thing that I've realized that I started to do because I like to have metrics for everything is the commonality between all these massively successful people is a high amounts of pain, high amounts of pain that actually push you towards your purpose. You know, see before when I started to really affirm and, and to manifest and to have the incantations as a chairman of 750, you know, uh, we, we tend to believe that it's just going to be rainbows and butterflies. But there's a lot of refinement that needs to take place. There's a lot of changes that need to take place when it comes for us to actually be 
the entity, you know, the actual, you know, uh, the actual visualization of what, what we actually say that we're going to be. You know, I didn't understand that. You know, I didn't understand and I, like that if I affirm something, if I manifest something, that in order for me to be that individual, God has to create trials and tribulations that's going to, you know, push me, right? That's going to push me to actually fix certain things within my life, right? Who here could experience this? Who here has experienced this before? See, when we start to think to ourselves that all these things that start to happen to us, the moment that we decide to go 100% all in, the moment that we decide that network marketing is for us, the moment that we decide that trading currencies, digital currencies, high frequency, e-commerce is for us, who here has realized that all these crazy things start to take place, that, that it was a lot easier to be ignorant. It was a lot easier to be like everybody else, right? But the reason why we start to have this conviction deep down inside of ourselves is because we start to operate at a different frequency. We start to operate at a frequency that is elite. You know, if, if, if there's Bob, you know, if there's Bob Proctor mentees in here, we understand there's a frequency that's here and there's a frequency of what we say that we want, you know, so we have to understand that this is all part of the process. You know, if anybody's been going through a season right now where you feel like you've been stuck, you know, we just call those divine delays. Like th these are the delays, right, that is meant for us so we can be able to fix the things that we need to fix. Because if you really think about it, you know, how can we be on stage and how can we be this person that provides impact if we never experience the opposite? You know, how can we experience true happiness if we never experience true sadness? You know, how can we experience true love if we never experience true heartbreak? See, all these things are key, right? But what people don't talk about and is, is, is the true vulnerable parts of the story. See, a lot of people always, you know, think to themselves, how come I'm the only one? How come I'm the only one that's going through pain? How come I'm the only one that's going through this struggle? You know, I've been trying to master the skill, but for some reason, things aren't happening. I've been trying to, to master to become, you know, a, a true professional in this network marketing industry and to be able to create that type of residuals. If you know Chairman 750, I just, just do the research on, on the weekly thing. Just do, just do the research. If that's not enough for you to keep going 100% all in, I don't know what is. I don't care if it took me five to 10 years to get to that you know, place. But here's what happened. You know, sometimes, you know, when you get to a place you know, where, where you never understood what it was like to have attention. You never knew what it was like to create income. You know, Alex Morin told me he's like the most dangerous income in this entire industry is 10 to 25,000 a month. And the reason being is because we don't know how to utilize that money. We don't know how to invest that money. We don't know how we like, we've been broke our entire lives. So how, how are we supposed to be able to handle this type of thing? There's some people that are top chairmen that are really P1Ks because they're still living paycheck to paycheck. See, we, we, don't, we don't teach these things, you know, for all the people that have, have titles, we don't teach ways to have generational wealth, but we teach ways to, you know, you know, create these habits that create generational poverty. I was sitting here, I was confused. I had no idea what I was supposed to do because I know deep down inside, I wanted to do things a different way, but it wasn't sexy. It wasn't aesthetic. If I try to focus on just value and purpose and all these things, you know, I thought that I had to be something that I wasn't, you know, and it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy to be someone that you're not. Like when you're not coming from a true and authentic place, the reason why when people speak and it seems like it sounds like the same thing over and over and over again is because they have no demonstration of the things that they're saying within their lives, right? That's why it doesn't hit. That's why there's no impact, right? They don't have any metrics. They don't have any results. People say they're obsessed, but you only see them grind just a little bit. People say that they're disciplined, but if you look at their body, it doesn't showcase that at all. You know, they talk about love. You can see the relationship, the toxic relationship that they keep putting themselves into. These are all keys. These are all keys. I was, I was, as soon as I smashed Chairman 25, all of a sudden, <clears throat> excuse me, I was 50, 50 people away, 50 people away from Chairman 50. And I want you to do some research on when I first hit it, 50 people away. You know, I started traveling, I started experiencing, and I started just being dumb. You know, I started buying all these things I need, that I didn't need to buy, you know, and I was going through a really tough time in my life because, you know, my daughter was in and out of the hospital. So what I decided to do was to go to worldly things, right, when it comes to drugs, alcohol, all these entities, so I could numb myself to not have to feel the pain of what's actually happening. See, this is key. We have to understand that if we keep numbing ourselves to the actual things that we feel inside, what we feel inside is a signal of the things to fix, okay? Of the things to fix. Anytime that you have anxiety, you smoke weed, you'll never fix the problem of anxiety, right? Every time she's blessed, she's 100% she's healthy right now. She's perfectly fine. So I appreciate it. But like, think about all these things, you know, if we're over here sad and we go to, and we, we, we go to liquor and alcohol, you know, by the time we're 35, four years old, we never fixed the, we, we never fixed the sadness, right? We never fixed the self-love. This is key. 
So I sat there and I was like, all right, well, I'm 50 people away from sharing 50. Obviously, this is how, you know, network marketing works. I'm just going to chill and we just grind the calls, whatever. And the next thing you know, I'm chairman 750. This is what we think about all the time, not realizing that the whole time that we're supposed to put five to seven years into this to become a chairman elite. If you put five to seven years consistent over time, thinking about the type of life that you could actually have. Think about it. And that's the reason why I made a commitment. I'm about to be 29 next month, but 20 of last year, I said, I'm doing seven years. I'm doing seven years of straight obscurity and obsession, and there's nobody that's getting in my way when it comes to being a better father, when it comes to being a better future spouse, when it comes to being a better businessman. I'm tired of being a little high school kid in this business, right? Trying to seek, you know, all this attention from everything else. It's time for us to be professionals and to impact the world in a very powerful way. If you think about it, what is your family looking at? If, you're, if your daughter is young, if your son is young, they're looking up. Who is their reference point? Who is their reference point? Are they looking at you as an inspiration or are they looking at you as a lesson of what not to be? I was 50 people away. Then all of a sudden, you know, obviously things you know, took place when it comes to cross recruitment and going to something else. And honestly, here's the crazy thing. I know this sounds trippy. I take full blame and responsibility. And the reason being is because that person that did that, that took over 800 people from, from the organization was my best friend. He was the person that I fed. He was the person that slept at my, on my couch. He's the person that I, that I clothed. I took him to all the first concerts. I, you know, literally the last conversation we had before he did this, you know, I literally paid for his car to get out being towed because he parked in the handicapped spot, right? If you read 48 Laws of Power, not to use it, but as a defense mechanism, it says in order to find a good enemy, find me a good friend because he knows exactly where to stab. This is all key. When you go into the, the place of faith and, and discipline and all these things, right, subconsciously people start to feel kind of, you know, offended by it, not because of you, but because of them. It's just projection. Everything to do is projection. They're not reacting to you. They're reacting to themselves, okay? So I sat there and I watched business fall apart and fall apart and fall apart. It got to a place where you have one leg for chairman, chairman 500. You have one leg for, for chairman 100. And then you have this leg that's just completely annihilated. And it got to, I remember this, it got to 46 people. It got to 46 people. If it went below that 45, I would have been a P2K. Do you understand what it feels like to be on stage and to feel like an like a, a imposter? Do you know what it feels like to try to give motivation to people when you have no motivation? Do you know what it's like to help people get out of suicidal tendencies and depression when you feel this at times, right? Do you understand what it feels like? So when I sat there, I said, dude, what is going on? What is going on? It wasn't until I took blame and responsibility to realize I had to fix things in my life. See, in order for God to get our attention sometimes, all he has to do is put these situations that slap you in the face and you hit rock bottom in order for you to look up. That's all that had to take place. I sat there and I saw everything and I watched and I watched and I watched. There's one thing though that I cannot have a sense of empathy with and I know that Brandon Boy can have a sense of empathy with is quitting. It's literally staying on the ground. No matter what takes place, for some reason, deep down inside, there's no way for me to just sit there. There's no way for me to just give up. There's no way for me to live the rest of my life. So that way, later on on the line, you know, my daughter, I look at my daughter, says the reason why I can't afford for you to take those ballet classes and, and to be able to go to that sports things and in order for you to travel to experience this is because of my decisions that I've made in the past, my lack of decisions that I made in the past. And I chose to be mediocre. I chose to drink. I chose to do worldly things. I chose to be stuck in my feelings. I, I, I chose to be stuck in a fetal position to life and sit there and cry. Like, that's not the type of person that I am. So I started to sit there. I said, okay, let's get real with yourself, right? Let's get real. What is the practical thing that I could do in order for me to become a better person? How come I don't have the confidence when everyone's saying I'm so happy and grateful that I'm chairman? How come I don't have the same confidence to be able to speak that? Everybody always wonders, how do we have that confidence? I figured it out. I had to kill the old self. I had to kill the old paradigm. I had to become what Chairman 750 Chris Roderick is. I had to become what making you know, Chairman 750 plus per trade Chris Roderick is. See, if you write down everything that you are, all the things, all the vices, all the bad habits, I want you to think to yourself of, of how much of that has destroyed certain entities in your life, how much of that has destroyed certain relationships in your life, how much of that has destroyed yourself when it comes to your life. And if you take all your vices, all your bad habits, everything that you do bad, and you put it in a, on a piece of paper and you make a column on the left-hand side, that is who you are as a leader. That is what you're duplicating. 
That is the frequencies that you're emitting, right? Are we, are we emitting the frequency of lostness? Are we emitting the frequencies of being like everybody else? See, the reason why there's people in this call right now that could go 100% all in is because you can't let go of the people that surround you, especially the people that you love. And majority of the times when you start to operate in place and you start to have a little bit of success, it's your acquaintances. It's the people that don't want to operate in the obsessed type of mentality that you have. I sat here and I said, you know, Kobe's my favorite basketball player, right? RIP to Kobe. And how can I sit here and look at pictures of this man and not have the same discipline and work ethic and impact and fathership, right? And, and, and you know, like, think about it. People mourn for the longest that I've ever seen in, you know, any, any world mourn. What impact are we making? So I decided to completely destroy that person. I said, what is Chairman 750? What is Chairman Elite? What is Chairman Elite Chris for Derek do? Does he hang out with those people? No, he doesn't. Does he, does he spend time with these people? Yes, he does. Right? Does he focus on his spirituality? Does he focus, you know, every single day? You know, I've never read the Bible before, but now reading it an hour every single day before bed has completely changed my life. You know, does that chairman, is that chairman elite do that? Does the chairman elite go to the gym every single day and not have to post on social media? Does the chairman elite, you know, build this business to the point where everything has become disciplined? Does the chairman elite, you know, replace the whole TV with a full whiteboard that you get at Home Depot, the biggest one that you have to use a truck to get it, right? Does, 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 a, chair, does a chairman elite stop all the dopamine fixes and wa stop watching stories to change the neural paths in their brain to create production, right? Does a chairman elite, right? Have production reports on a day-to-day -day basis, create a system that's duplicatable for the team. Does that person do that? Does a person that is a chairman elite complain about all the calls they have to do? We have to change it. See, we have to understand this. Tony Robbins said this, if it's passion, it pulls, it pulls energy out of you. If it's not your passion, it pushes you, right? What does Simon Sinek says? If you do something that you love, it's called passion. If you do something that you hate every single day, it's called stress. See, some people are stressed out about this business because the intention is messed up. But once we get out of our own head, we start to have massive success. How do we do that? How do we have influence? How do we become that leader? Well, first off, in order for you to have influence over many, you have to have influence of self. If you can't influence your daily routines, if you can't influence the way that you think, if you can't influence your habits, if you can't do this, just like John C. Maxwell says, if he spends time with someone, by the time it's 6 o'clock p.m., he knows exactly how much money that person will make or has in their bank account. The whole moral of the story is this. I got 60 seconds. You got five months left for the rest of the year. What are you doing with it? What are you doing? We've been wasting time. We've been sitting here. What's all these leisure activities? What does all the shows equate to when it comes to return on investment? What is chasing the opposite sex, you know, equate to on return on investment? You know, what is, what is over here just chilling and scrolling on social media? Either you're, you're reading posts or you're making posts, right? You're watching videos or you're making videos. You're watching lives or you're making lives. Either you're using this tool that's distracting you or using this tool as an extension of yourself to share your message to everyone in the world. You want to hit chairman? You want to hit chairman? All you have to do is think to yourself of all the traumatic experiences that you've had in your entire life. Think to yourself, has 500 people experienced the same thing? And because your voice is not heard, think about those 500 people who will never have the opportunity and the open door to change their entire life, okay? Kill the old self and write down on, on the other side of the column, right, exactly who you are as a chairman elite, as a chairman elite profits when it comes to trading, et cetera. Like, and then I want you to rip the other half and just burn it. Because that person does not exist anymore. You, get, you got five months left for the rest of this year. Whatever you do with the next five months will be the dictation of the type of Thanksgiving, the type of Christmas, the type of New Year's that you'll be able to have. So I appreciate you guys for allowing me on this call. Thank you, Brandon. You know, I, like, you, know, I, you have no idea how much I love you, man. You know, you're an inspiration to a lot of us. And um, I honestly wouldn't have, I wouldn't have stayed in this platform if you weren't in that room. For sure. A hundred percent. So appreciate you, brother. Bro, all, all I can do is shake my head, man. I, I thought you were doing like a Matthew chapter five sermon on the Mount, man. That was, that was, <laughs> that was freaking powerful, man. This is, uh, this, this is awesome, man. Guys, here's a couple of notes and I, I'm a note taker. I've never peaked. So here, here's some notes I wrote. I want you guys to listen. It's a couple bullet points before I bring on our next one. What he said at the beginning that I loved, he said, changes must take place in us. So if you want things to change, you have to change. He said, I needed to make the change because he, what did he say? He said, it kept saying, I'm happy and grateful now, but he's like, man, I didn't, I, I didn't feel it. I didn't have the confidence. I didn't have the belief. Yes, I can say it, but it's almost like it's empty. 
He said, you have to affirm your future. The key word is affirm the I am declarations. You have to call the things that are not as though they already were. Did you hear about his recovery? Smashes the ranks and comes all the way down to pretty much a P2000. That is pretty depressing. You guys heard that from Michael Angel Martin last month. He went all the way down to that rank after being all the way at the top. But here's what he did, and what I liked that I wrote down as well. He said, I replaced my TV with a whiteboard. That's pretty awesome, man. The question is, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want a six and seven figure trading account? How bad do you want the opportunity to spend more time with your kids? Chris wanted to spend more time. He wanted to be there for his daughter's birthday, right? How badly do you want more time freedom? Are you willing on the business side to take a lot of no's in order to get those results? To take all the no's to get what we got yesterday in our e-wallets with payday. Yes, certainly I would do it all over again, especially last week with those, uh, with those uh, <laughs> override residuals, man. That was, uh, that was beautiful. So uh, Chris, thank you, man. I mean, Chris is one of the pioneers of our company. Uh, for those who don't know him, you got to know this is a guy that planted his flag. He was in the room. We made the decision. We are moving forward regardless. We know it's going to be a little bit of a bloodbath here, but it's all going to be worth it. So thank you for that.